Chief Warrant Officer Great Kevin R. Brown, in which he will retire after 22 years of honorable and faithful service. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invitation by Officer Warren. Thank you for this time and all that are gathered here for this ceremony, the retirement of Kevin Brown, God Chief War Officer of the United States Marine Corps. God, I thank you for Kevin and his faithfulness and his life thus far to the service and to protection, the protection of our nation and the freedom that we have here. God, I thank you for his dedication, his commitment, his faithfulness to the Corps. And God, your faithfulness to protect him and his family in the many deployments, the times that he's been called away from home. I thank you for his wife, his children, their service, their faithfulness, and their fervency to him over the course of Kevin's career. And God, I thank you most of all for Kevin and his family that have come to know you, who once were dead in their sins, but yet made alive through faith in Jesus Christ. And now they know the experience uh, your forgiveness, your deliverance, and your saving power that has transformed their lives, their marriage, and their home. God, I do thank you for the miracle of salvation in them. And I thank you for them, Kevin, Jenna, and their kids, their family, the examples they are in reflecting you in their lives. And I'm asking God, this day, your blessing of peace, direction, provision, finances, and your grace to fall upon them as they make this transition, God, uh, from the core to the future destiny they have in you. God, your blessing and hand upon them. God, I'm asking your blessing on this ceremony and all that are gathered here. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now entering the reviewing area is Chief Warrant Officer 5, Richard Cordes. Good afternoon, sir. The ceremony is ready. Continue on the ceremony. Aye, aye, sir. Marine to be retired and awarded. Sitter!
Signed, Robert B. Neller, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Certificate of Appreciation for Service in the Armed Forces of the United States of America. Chief Warrant Officer 3, Kevin Brown, USMC. I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation for your contribution of honor, sir, honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during a critical time in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of military service. Your commitment and dedication have been an inspiration for those who will follow in your footsteps and for all Americans who join me today in saluting you for a job extremely well done. My best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. Signed, Donald J. Trump, Commander-in-Chief. Dear Chief Warrant Officer 3 Brown, the Marine Corps has been your occupation and family for many years past. And I am certain the memories, interests, and in the future of the Corps will remain with you forever. Many desire to obtain your accomplished goals, but few can compare to you. You have clearly demonstrated the exceptional leadership qualities and professional contributions we seek of our senior Marines. We are proud, as you must be, of your successful career. As a teacher to young Marines, a source of wise counsel, and as an example of those soldierly virtues we so admire. You have made a mark on the Corps that will remain long after you have left your active ranks. There are many young Marines you have influenced who will carry on in the same fine tradition that has always characterized the United States Marine Corps. You have my best wishes for good health and continued success in the years ahead. Semper Fidelis, Robert B. Nell, General, U.S. Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Dear Chief Warrant Officer 3 Brown, on the occasion of your retirement, I would like to extend my congratulations and heartfelt thanks for your many years of dedicated service and selfless devotion to our country and Corps. You have made tremendous contributions and sacrifices throughout your Marine Corps career. As you prepare to enter this new chapter of your life, you can look back with immense pride and satisfaction on all you have accomplished. You have set an example of professionalism and leave a standard of excellence for all Marines who will carry on the legacy of our Corps. My wife, Andrea, joins me in wishing you continued success in the future. Semper Fidelis, Ronald L. Green, 18th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. United States Marine Corps, for service as set forth in the following. For outside, outstanding meritorious service while serving as the Regional Fuels Officer, G4 Department, Marine Corps Installation East, Marine Corps Base, Camp Lejeune, from July 2018 to August 2019. Chief Warrant Officer 3 Brown's ex exceptional technical knowledge, key management skills, and selfish devotion to duty were instrumental in establishing the first Regional Fuels Office as a functioning entity. His in-depth knowledge of Marine Corps and Defense Logistics Agency fuel programs guided the development of fuel infrastructure support agreements he implemented, which provided a new source of maintenance funding that will result in improved facilities and significant savings across the region for years to come. Additionally, he played a pivotal role in articulating Marine Corps Recruit Depot's Paris Island fuel storage requirements and subsequently coordinated corrective action to convert the existing fuel storage tanks to meet the operational requirements of the installation. Most importantly, it enabled the depot operational requirements. It enabled the depot to store DS2 in sufficient quantity to sustain the installation's 28 fixed emergency generators to support critical infrastructure for up to 48 hours in the event of an extended power outage associated with a destructive weather event. His superior performance of duty during this tour is a hallmark of a career devoted to accomplishing broad and diverse tasks in combat and peace, highlighting the culmination of 22 years 
of honorable and dedicated Marine Corps service. Chief Warrant Officer Creed Brown's untiring efforts to carry out his demanding tasks with unfailing good judgment, effectiveness, and total devotion to duty reflected great credit upon him and were in keeping with the highest traditions of the Marine Corps of the United States Naval Service. From the President, J.D. Alford, Major General, United States Marine Corps, Commanding General, Marine Corps Installations East, Marine Corps Base, Camp Lejeune.
given this 30th day of August 2019, A.R. Evans, Colonel, United States Marine Corps, Commanding Officer, Headquarters and Support Battalion, Marine Corps Installations East, Marine Corps Base, Camp Lejeune. Certificate of Appreciation presented to Nathaniel J. Brown. You have earned the Corps grateful appreciation for your unselfish, faithful, and devoted service during your father's Marine Corps career. Your unfailing support and understanding helped to make possible your father's lasting contribution to the Corps and to this command. We fully recognize this was not made possible without your personal sacrifice during your father's tour of duty. Given this 30th day of August, 2019, A.R. Evans, Colonel, United States Marine Corps, Commanding Officer, Headquarters of Corps Battalion, Marine Corps Installations East, Marine Corps Base, Camp Lejeune. sacrifice and service, but your guys' service to support him, and uh, I and everyone in here, thank you. To Marines, families, and friends, thank you for coming to share this day. Uh, this is Kevin's day. Um, I'm not going to go through his entire bio as if you can read it. Um, Kevin and I were talking earlier. Um, Kevin and I met four or five years ago because we had an agreement. You stay on the east of the Mississippi, I'll stay on the west of the Mississippi. I'm not an east coast guy, he's not a west coast guy, as you can tell by his bio. I told him earlier, I think for the last five years, the Marine Corps spent $7.82 on his PCS moves. <laughs> so, um, with that, um, I would like to touch on a few things. Uh, in 97, Kevin came in the Marine Corps from Dayton, Ohio, which Kevin's the only person from Ohio I've met because most people from Ohio don't know they're allowed to leave. <laughs> everyone said, why is, you know, Kevin, why are you retiring? And I know what you told me like a couple years ago. You said when the Browns are contenders, you're going to retire. <laughs> okay. So, so you have a reason now. So, um, so Kevin uh, came in, he went to Japan uh, right after boot camp and everything else that you go through to become a United States Marine. Uh, he then has his first experience with the East Coast after that. Um, and he does uh, some time on uh, Cherry Point, I believe. Then he goes to I&I &I in Delaware and somehow you know, because you just wore a flight suit at Cherry Point the whole time, you got to go to I&I, &I, and you got to go to OIF, which is hard to do from an I&I. &I. So that just tells you Kevin's commitment to the Marine Corps. Uh, a lot of people who spend time in I&I, &I is, you know, don't have the opportunity. So I'm going to tell you for uh, a person of Kevin's stature and his rank at the time to get to go to OIF, it wasn't because they were probably looking for people, it was because he was knocking people's door down and saying, I need to get over there. I want to be over there with the other bulk fuel Marines. You know, I've done my time here, but it's time for me to get into the fight. And that just from that young of age tells you the character that uh, Kevin's got towards his support of the Marine Corps. 
So you get back from that, and they said, you know, hey, where do you want to go? And Kevin's a creature of habit, so he goes, let me go back to 9th ESB. So he goes back to 9th ESB, and then I believe you got recruiting over there. Now, I'm sorry. <laughs> if any of you have known Kevin very long, Kevin was a recruiter, and it says he was a recruiter of the quarter, recruiter of the month, recruiter of the year. For those of you who know Kevin, after about eight words, Kevin's done talking for the day. Okay? You know, that's pretty much Kevin, you know? So I'm like, recruit. Then I was like going, yeah, we're at Dayton, Ohio. Okay. You, po you told people they could leave if you signed it. <laughs> No, in seriousness, uh, recruiting, uh, I, have, I was never on recruiting, but I've heard the horror stories. And I have never met uh, anyone who was month and year and quarter as a recruiter. Again, he didn't go to become a recruiter just because he got tapped. He gave it 110%, gave everything he had to it to become the outstanding recruiter that he was. And again, took a position where I don't think anybody volunteers for recruiting. And took it, ran with it, and did an outstanding job with it. So you leave recruiting, and then 2011, because you left there, and then you, I think your highest enlisted rank was Gunny, leaves that, and then 2011 decides he wants to become a warrant officer. And that in itself is uh, a difficult task. And uh, that's after I met Kevin at uh, um, WTI, or IT, yeah, WTI, we met for the first time. And again, it's because I like to be on the West Coast and Kevin likes to be on the East Coast. And, you know, but I had heard things about Kevin already. And his, just the way he did things, he was a no nonsense, let's get the job done. And, you know, We've got a mission to, to get done. And again, no one likes doing WTIs. So about a year and a half ago, uh, after I become, got my position up at headquarters Marine Corps, one of the things that I wanted to do during my tour as the five, as I said, there needs to be some changes within the MOS. And one of the changes is the fuels officers and the stations need to leave. And I still check my car for bombs from Colonel Baldwin, because, okay, I'm gonna tell you right now. So, I took the fuels officers from the stations on the East Coast, and I put them at the regions, at MCI East, West, and PAC. Um, I did that because that's where they need to be. The staff and COs need to be down there with the fuels, the officers need to be up here, and one of the selling points I gave to the general was, the East Coast is the only ones that have them, either the West and the Pacific are wrong, or the East is wrong, which is it? He agreed, we got to move them. So now it became, who do I place at these regional fuels officers? For those of you that don't understand what the position of the regional fuels officers is, we are tactical by nature. Regions are in charge of all the shore facilities, the station fuels in the area. So I needed someone who knew the East Coast. There was no question it was Chief Warrant Officer Brown because his experience this was a billet that had never been created before. This was a brand new position that no one's ever held before. There was no guidance. There was no turnover folder. There was no, hey, this is how you do the job. I said, Kevin, I'm going to put you at the region because nobody knows the East Coast the way you do. I need you to. I gave him the option. He said, yeah, let me do it. And I'm going to tell you right now, there are a bunch of people who weren't doing their jobs who are glad to see him go right now. <laughs> because Kevin held people accountable. Kevin, Kevin stressed some people out. Because it's gonna get done this way. And a lot of information wasn't getting passed. Kevin clarified it, detailed it, and made sure it was correct. And a lot of people were shocked by, wait a minute, this is not what we've been told for years. Kevin was not afraid to go up to any rank and say, look, this is the right way to do things. He 
took one of the most difficult, I'm not going to say one, the most difficult region. Because the other regions welcomed their fuels officers with open arms. This region was still mad because I took three of them from them. So the other ones had offices, Kevin had a broom closet. <laughs> Didn't bother him. He knew what the right thing to do was. So Kevin, for that, I say thank you very much for the job that you did up there, the job that you've done over the years, our friendship. Uh, you have made both feel stronger. You have made this community tighter. And I'm gonna tell you that tomorrow when we wake up, it's gonna be a little weaker because you're not here. And I mean that sincerely. And again, to the family, thank you for allowing us to have him and uh, his ability will be greatly missed. The award was more than deserved. And again, I thank you for this opportunity to say goodbye to you in this kind of forum. So thank you very much, Kevin.
for each of them. It's more than this to all of them, but <laughs> you want to hit on one point. The thing they got from me is that they made it better. So, Jeremiah, oh, let me go with the girls so I can get rid of this. So. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi, my little love. Uh, Naomi, uh, the thing that I think she gets from me is her good looks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm neither one of those. <laughs> I, I, I gotta say, uh, the, the looks, but uh, this is for you, baby. All right. <laughs> uh, Serena. Serena, this is my oldest daughter. <laughs> so, Serena, um, I think for the first four or five years of her life, we just used. Uh, Facial expressions and to talk to each other. Make the hand and arm signals. Because we didn't talk. I call her name. Hey, Serena, she goes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we talk to each other. But she's, this is my, my eyes and my ears. Everything, um, she's like Jenna, but I'm not, I'm not my wife. <laughs> Nothing crazy like that. Y'all don't say what I mean. This is, uh, she's my girl. Hey, I can depend on her for anything. Um, and I appreciate you becoming a young, a young woman and taking care of your business, not getting in trouble, not being a problem. Um, like the rest of your brothers. <laughs> This is my first Eagle Global Anchor. 
This is what I got uh, on parade day when my drone sort came up to me and told me, uh, y'all see that? Saw this? <laughs> One of my drum sergeants came up and told me, he said, uh, congratulations, Marine. Shook my hand, and he, uh, he even gave me a hug. You know, even uh, two weeks earlier, he spit on me. But uh, he uh, gave me my, my first piece of anchor, and he told me, he said, he said, bro, if ever I see you again, and I ask you, where's your first piece of anchor, you ought, to, you ought to know where it is, you ought to be able to pull it out and hand it to me and show me. Um, so this Eagle Global Anchor uh, is a testament to what I went through as uh, coming up in life, you know, overcoming adversity, overcoming boot camp. At that time, boot camp was the roughest thing, <clears throat> the roughest 13 weeks that I that I ever been through. All right, uh, so I thought, but uh, I overcame. It. And I told you, my, my kids, uh, they're a reflection of me, but they amplify who I am. So I wanted to give this one to my son. My son, he uh, kept, he's stronger than I was when I was there, he's faster. He's uh, more manly than I was at his age. Uh, but I appreciate uh, young man that you are. I appreciate everything you're doing. Sky's the limit for you. Sky's the limit. You keep a good, uh, good head on your shoulder. Keep doing the right thing. Uh, you can go far. All right, man. Hey, right, I got one more thing in my money value in the bag uh, for Jeremiah. So, Jeremiah, if there is. Uh, any good in me, Jeremiah, he has all of um, He's not a bad kid. He can't, like, like, he doesn't lie. Like, at his age, I lie. I, I lie a lot. Um, I can ask Jeremiah, and he, he, he'll he know. He, he know he's going to get in trouble. Like, hey, did you do this? Yes, I did. To the point where I'm like, oh, you told the truth. I can't remember what I'm <laughs> So uh, he, he's he's a good kid. Like, like I said, if, there, if there's any good in me, uh, Jeremiah has poured it out. I, I had this uh, dog tags here. I wore in uh, Afghanistan, no Iraq. He's uh, what this? It has my favorite verse on here, Psalm 27. Uh, Psalm 27 says, "The Lord is my life, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid?" Uh, I wore this uh, while I was over there, and uh, I want to give it to Jeremiah so that Jeremiah can remember the goodness. It ain't so, it's not the goodness of him, it's the goodness of God. And uh, the goodness of God shining through Jeremiah. I want you to remember that. You hear me? What else? <laughs> So, um, I neglected to say in the beginning, I, I wouldn't be here where I am today if it wasn't for God. Like, point blank. I, I, I love to, there's uh, a large part of my career where I thought that, hey, I did this or I did that. I, w I didn't do anything if God didn't allow it to happen, you know. So I want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Amen. first uh, for everything. Amen. Um, the uh, opportunities that I've had, the things that I've uh, been able to do, it's only been because of God. And I know that next week, you know, everybody's gonna be like, well, "Who's Chief on Officer Brown?" You know, the Marine Corps goes on, no matter who you are. Uh, that's the good thing about the Marine Corps. But I want to leave y'all with something. All right, Marines, she did it right today, but 
when you read promotional warrants, it's not to all who should see these pre uh, presence greetings. Okay? It's presence greetings. There's a comma in there. <laughs> it's presence Green. greetings. <laughs> Alright? So, if y'all <laughs> Y'all don't remember anything else. Y'all don't remember me for that. Every time y'all hear promotion, one like, keep going off the ground. I said no. They said it wrong. All right? so there, I put something in your head. You can remember it forever. Um, I didn't like, like I said, uh, when I first got up here, the accolades and everything. I, I didn't. I never set out to to gain any of that. I just set out to do my job. They, um, the General Services told me mission accomplishment and troop welfare. That's what Marines do. Mission accomplishment and troop welfare. And that's what I focused on. Whenever I was in doubt, well, what's the mission? Okay, let's go do that. Are the Marines okay? Yep, they're okay. So uh, that's what I focused on. And, you know, you get a lot of people who want to criticize and they want to nitpick on everything you do. Like, I'm standing here now, and this is just the nature of Marines. Marines, you know, looking at my ribbons, make sure my ribbons are placed great. They're looking at my medals, make sure my medals are good, make sure my, my gig line is good. That's, <laughs> that's just Marine Corps stuff. But uh, this room is uh, full of doers, you know, not, not people who uh, stand by and just watch. And I didn't want to be one of the people who just stood by and watched. I have a, uh, a quote on my refrigerator. Uh, I don't know if my family even read it, but I'm going to read it. I want to read it to you all. It says, the, gallery, the galleries are full of critics. They play no ball. They fight no fights. They make no mistakes because they attempt nothing. Down in, the, down in the arena are the doers. They make mistakes because they try many things. The man who makes no mistakes lacks boldness and the spirit of adventure. He is the one who never tries anything. He is the brake on the wheels of progress. And yet, it cannot be truly said that he makes no mistakes. Because his biggest mistake is the very fact that he tries nothing, does nothing, except criticize those who do things. Like I said, I'm in a room full of doers. And if I can leave you with anything, if you're not a doer, be a doer. Don't just be, uh, don't be, uh, a Facebook warrior. Y'all know those are They're people who sit on Facebook and talk about other people, but they don't go out and do anything. Do. Do. And that's all I've tried to do is do. And that's all I have. Thank you.
Sir, this concludes today's ceremony. Hurry up, we're playing with the day. Aye, aye, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. On behalf of the commanding officer, the battalion sergeant major, the officers and enlisted Marines with headquarters and support battalion, Marine Corps Installations East, Marine Corps Base, Camp Lejeune, thank you for your attendance. We would also like to recognize Staff Sergeant Russell and the 2nd Marine Division Brass Quintet. Please be seated for the presentation of Old Glory and End of Watch. For 22 years, this Marine has stood the watch. While many of us lay about in our bunks at night, this Marine stood the watch. While others of us were attending schools, this Marine stood the watch. And yes, even before many of us were even born, 
This Marine stood the watch. As our families watched the storm clouds of war brewing on the horizons of history, he stood the watch. This Marine looked ashore and saw his family often needing guidance, but knew that he must stay because he had the watch. For 22 years, this Marine stood the watch so that our fellow countrymen could sleep soundly and safely, <clears throat> knowing that this Marine would stand the watch. Today, today we are here to say that the watch stands relieved. Sir, relieved by those who have led, by those who have guided, and by those who have trained. Sir, you stand relieved. We have the watch. Uh, uh, <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you.